Yesterday, Apple unveiled the new and refreshed MacBook M2 and M2 Max, as well as a new Mac Mini, finally. This comes about a year and a half after the last generation of MacBook M1s were released, which I currently use for all of my video editing. Let's talk a little bit about the new features, whether it's worth the price, and if I personally will be upgrading right now. Starting off, we have the standard 14 and 16 inch models, both with the option for the new M2 Pro or M2 Max chips. And these are expected to start shipping on January 24th, so about one week from announcement to ship. Starting at $2,000 and the 16 inch M2 Pro starting at $2,500. And this is pretty much right on par with last time, which honestly, in this day and age, is always a huge win. Now, I'm not gonna go super into technical specs for a lot of these features because as creatives, what we care about is how much faster can it get my job done? For video transcoding, the M2 Pro and M2 Max at first glance look like they're miles ahead of anything that Apple has ever put out before. And while they may be faster than previous models, if you look a little closer, the difference between the M1 Max and the M1 Pro seem to be closer than expected on both the 14 and 16 inch models. For video editing, the same remains true. And you'll notice that if you have the M1 Pro, it is extremely close to the M2 Pro. And if for some reason you have the M1 Max, but this time around you're thinking about settling for the M2 Pro, maybe you don't think that the Max was worth the price tag last time, you'll see that the M1 Max is still substantially faster than the M2 Pro, and it's a large, large margin. Now, if you're thinking about buying any of these for photo editing, you'll see that they don't claim the same massive increases as any of the video related specs, but still about two and a half times faster than the baseline Intel i9 Max. Now, that's also another thing to consider in these graphics, they're comparing them to the baseline Intel i9 Max. So if you have an upgraded version, definitely do more research because the difference could be closer than you think. From a storage standpoint, the new M2 Max now offers up to 96 gigabytes of RAM, which is probably overkill for most of us. And again, with the eight terabyte of SSD storage, which is still just mind blowing. If you think about how big eight terabytes is and the fact that these now have the option for built-in SSDs this size, it's still just, it's still crazy to me. is the new Mac Mini. The Mac Mini, on the other hand, is starting at just $599 and also brings a pro chip to Mac Minis for the first time. These are finally getting a much needed upgrade. And this personally is much more intriguing to me. I think at this price point with these features, it really seems like a no brainer if you're looking to upgrade. I switched from my 2017 iMac 27 inch a little bit over a year ago. And I now use MacBook for everything now all of my work, all of my video editing, all of my web browsing, everything is done on this computer connected to an external monitor. Now, that doesn't mean I don't miss the beautiful iMac display, but you really just can't beat the features that these M1 iMacs put out, even at the $2,700 price point. And it looks like I'm not alone. A very large amount of videographers have done the exact same thing. But I'll talk a little bit more about the Mac Mini in another video. A little bit about the battery in the MacBooks, which is one of the most important things in my opinion. For the 14 inch model, you now have up to 18 hours of video playback and 12 hours of wireless web browsing. And on the 16, you have up to 22 hours of video playback and 15 hours of web browsing. These are both slight improvements over last year's model, but honestly, I think it's only like an hour longer for browsing, so it's nothing major. The displays look to be exactly the same, so I believe no improvement at all on the screen. So just to recap, some slight improvements over last year's M1 MacBook for the same price. Not a huge upgrade, but I guess it's still an upgrade nonetheless. I'm assuming this is more geared towards the people that are still on older versions of MacBooks that don't contain the M1 chip. Now, all that being said, will I personally be buying it for my video production business? Not right now. I really just 
don't see a massive upside for me. And I've been perfectly happy with this M1 MacBook Pro. It can run all my C70 and R5 footage with no issues, with zero transcoding. So this one's gonna be a pass for me. Now, if you have one of the older MacBooks, like say one of these, I would say this is definitely worth it for you. But the M1 MacBooks are slightly on sale and I mean very, very slightly. So if you're looking to purchase right now, absolutely go for the M2, it's a no brainer. What about you? What do you think about this new M2 chip? Do you think it's worth upgrading from the M1? Leave your comments down below. Is this what you were hoping for? Thanks for watching guys. My name is Devin. I own a video production and photography business named Labrie Media. And I'd love for you to subscribe and stick around to see more of these types of videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.